You first met them in Death by Natural Causes. They slither, they creep, and they crawl. But where are they now? So you may have been wondering, what happened to Death by Natural Causes when Death by Natural Causes closed? We had plants, we had animals, we had minerals, we had that dress dripped in arsenic. So all of our live animals stayed at the museum. And I have one right here. This is our Gila monster. You guys probably saw him on display. Maybe buried, maybe not. But he is enjoying his time in the basement with the rest of our animal collection in his original house. So we gave him more room to burrow. Gila monsters naturally really love to burrow, but of course, while he was on display, we wanted y'all to be able to see him. So we kind of raised his platform up a little bit. Um, and then didn't give him too much space to really bury himself. So now he's got a lot more space to kind of dig and make little tunnels, which is a really natural behavior for him. And he loves taking his soaks in his water bowl. So we clean it every single day. Um, on display up in DBNC, he kind of had a little bit of an attitude when it got cold outside. He would uh, jump out of the lot or hiss. He, he likes to hiss, but um, he would also sometimes stop eating, which is fairly normal for heel monsters and even reptiles. They do not have to eat every single day like us mammals do. So we wouldn't get concerned, but he just, you know, he would throw attitude at us all the time. <laughs> Whereas now, He's perfectly happy burying himself. He is not nearly as defensive as he uh, as he normally would have been. And um, if we don't see him, but we make you know we know he's okay in there, we leave him alone. We don't have to touch his exhibit tank at all. And he's perfectly happy. And he has not gone off food since like what we brought him down. Yes, he is a good eater. These guys can uh, brewmate when it's cold outside. So they'll kind of not want to eat, not want to move, which is tricky when they're on display because of course you want everyone to be able to see him. You want to make sure he's eating and happy. Um, so now that we brought him down into the animal alcove, we've warmed it up a little bit for him. I don't know if you got to visit DBNC, but it was always super chilly upstairs. Uh, luckily, the alcove is about 80 degrees, 80 degrees. for other reptiles and amphibians, which is why I've Lane and I are always in short sleeve shirts and <laughs> shorts year round because it does get pretty hot in there. But our lizards, like the Gila monster, love it. Mm -hmm. And so he's got his, you know, UV lamps, his heat emitters. So he's nice and toasty warm. He has been eating great. And so we're actually gonna try to feed him. Uh, they don't need to eat every single day. Uh, they are cold blooded. So it takes a little bit of time for him to digest that food. But we have a defrosted hopper mouse for him. Uh, in the wild, they would really eat a lot of eggs, rodents, but they're not big hunters. So they're kind of lazy. Lazy. They're going to wait for food to come to them. So let's see if he wants it. He's going to flick that tongue out to smell it. And they do have a forked tongue. Uh, very good. So that forked tongue is going to kind of tell them which side the food is on. Luckily for him, his food gets delivered kind of right in front of him. Feeding him on exhibit was always very interesting because some days he didn't want any food and then some days he would follow your hand through the tank. We still use tongs just to be safe. And gloves. And gloves. And we of course never want him to kind of eat any of the substrate he's on. So this is a safe way to do that. But after his first mouse, once he kind of figured out what we were doing in there, he would chase you down. He would claw the back of the cage. He would try to like, escape or not escape but try to get out of the window where we would open up just to eat and there, that's a, that was yeah. a pretty far drop for him too so we'd have to watch out for this guy. <laughs> uh, now that he's off exhibit his appetite has gone up a little bit but overall I think he's pretty yeah. he's pretty excited to be downstairs he gets a little bit of R&R. &R. We're pretty excited for him to be downstairs too mm -hmm. because then um, you know, occasionally, like all the time, he since he is a digger, he would like to dig around in his tank, which meant that like Lane and I would have to go up there every morning before opening to fix the tank up to where it looks pristine for everybody too. So that was just a daily thing going all the way from the basement mm -hmm. to the third floor, fixing his rocks and right. making it look 
carrying a bucket of gravel down yeah. to the sink and scrubbing it. All the buckets of water all the time because <laughs> there's no sinks upstairs. Mm -hmm. We had to travel with all this stuff. And I think he's pretty happy to be downstairs, but he definitely does miss people sometimes. I feel like he is pretty responsive oh, when yeah. people come and kind of get um, the look. He's tamed a lot <laughs> since we got him. Yeah, oh, yeah. We got him like a year and a half before the exhibit opened and he was wild back mm -hmm. then. So seeing all the people did also help him get used to it and tame him down, which means obviously he would never be able to be released in the wild, but that's good for us because we can take care of him and make sure his needs are met while us, you know, stay, you know, we're staying <laughs> safe during that whole thing as well. And you can definitely see him in the animal alcove. He's kind of right up front in our window. Um, and we're hoping to take him on some programs too. So our wildlife on wheel programs, uh, our venom poison one, he'd be perfect for that. And so hopefully you guys can come and see him in his new spot.